describing things in English. There are many ways to describe things in English. In this video, we will look at general to specific features, using adjectives, using prepositional phrases, using relative clauses, component parts, functions, and passive phrases. Objects don't usually describe themselves. As a human, you may need to describe things and tell how they work. One way to do this is to start generally, then move to specific features. You can look at the process in this way. An item fits generally into a category or a group of similar items. What does it have in common with other items? Compare. The item is unique in some way. How is it different from other items in the same category? Contrast. For example, how would you describe an alligator? First, start generally. It's a reptile. That's a category or classification, a type of animal. It's like a lizard. Narrow down the category or group. Focus on similarities. But it, an alligator, is much bigger, has rough skin, and lives in the water. That is how it is different from other lizards. Describing things. General to specific. See what we did? We started with the category. Animals and reptiles, the group. We are helping the listener focus on our topic. The listener thinks of the category, then the items within the category. The category is the group. For example, the group might include reptiles, which are turtles, snakes, and lizards. Then we think of items within the category. We're comparing it to other items. For example, types of lizards. This is how it is similar. Then we contrast it with the other items in the group. The alligator is much larger than other lizards, and it has rough skin and big teeth. So, the first step in describing things is to help people see category, similarities, and differences. For example, it's a book. It's a funny book. It's a funny book about a cow on a couch. It's a funny book that tells a story about a cow on a couch. Let's look at some ways to do this. Number two, add adjectives. In English, we put adjectives before a noun or an object. A blue book, a small book, a big blue book. Here we have two adjectives. Sometimes we can have more than that. To make full sentences, we can connect the noun and adjective with a be verb which serves as an equal sign. For example, we can say the book equals blue. To make a sentence, we say the book is blue. So, to describe objects, we can add an adjective or adjectives before the object, a large book, or tell a characteristic or feature of the object using a full sentence with the pattern subject verb adjective the book is large three we can also use prepositional phrases for example a book about a cow on the couch in english prepositional phrases usually come after the noun 
not before. We do not say an about a cow on the couch book. That is incorrect. In full sentences, prepositional phrases like adjectives come after the equal sign. The book equals about a cow on the couch sentence. The book is about a cow on the couch. Four, use relative clauses. A book that children love. Like prepositional phrases, relative clauses come after the objects they describe. For example, a book that children love is jump on the bump. An animal that lives in the water is an alligator. We will not go into detail about relative clauses here. We'll save that for another video. Some related questions. A. Can we use verbs other than be in these types of sentences? Yes. There are a few other linking verbs that function as equal signs. It seems nice. Subject equals the adjective. It feels smooth. Subject linking verb adjective. The linking verb serves as an equal sign. They smell sweet. Subject linking verb adjective. It looks like a lizard. Subject linking verb prepositional phrase. Another question. Can we combine elements to make other sentences? Yes. Nouns can be surrounded by adjectives, prepositional phrases, or relative clauses in full sentences. For example, the blue pen is on the table. The pen on the table is blue. The pen that I use is on the table. One more question. Can we use these to make other kinds of sentences as well? Yes. Just remember to keep the adjectives, prepositional phrases, and relative clauses nearby the nouns they are describing. Tom has a small store near the bank. Lena lives in a house that has a large lawn. Five, component parts. Another way to describe an object is to mention its component parts. The most common way to do this is to use the verb has or have. For example, that bicycle has two tires, a frame, handlebars, and a small seat. Elephants have trunks, big ears, thick skin, and short tails. Can you name the parts of these objects? A robot has head, arms, and legs. Razors have handles and blades. A handbag has a strap, a flap, and a pouch. Let's go back to our first example. An alligator is a reptile that lives in the water. It looks like a big lizard, and it has rough skin, a long tail, and huge teeth. Can you see how these elements are put together to describe something? Number six, tell how the object works. Most objects do not work by themselves. They need a person to operate them. For this example, Let's say that the person is you. A hammer is a very useful tool. You can pound nails with it. What can you do with these items? You can with it. You can with 
it or them. You can make some sentences of your own about these objects. For example, you can cut your fingernails with the fingernail clippers. You can write on the whiteboard with the marker. You can cook things in the microwave. You can put papers together with the stapler. Focusing on the object itself. If you want to focus on the object instead of the user, you can use passive phrases such as these. It is used by people for pounding nails. It is called a hammer by people. They are made of cotton. They are composed of four parts. We will save the passive voice for another video. For now, let's just learn a few common phrases to describe objects. Some common phrases that enable us to focus on the objects instead of the people using them are it is called name of the object it is used for purpose or function it is made of material it is composed of component parts can you make sentences about this object here are some details an hourglass, measuring time, wood, glass, and sand, frame, top and bottom chambers. This is called an hourglass. It is used for measuring time. It is made of wood, glass, and sand. It is composed of a frame, top and bottom chambers. Try a few of these phrases to describe some objects. For example, what is this called? It's called a hammer. What is it made of? It's made of wood and metal. What is it used for? It is used for building things. What is it composed of? It is composed of three parts, a handle, a head, and claw. Guessing game. I'm thinking of an object. Can you guess what this object is? It's a type of tool general category. It's thin and long. These are adjectives. It is from the classroom. Prepositional phrase. It is an object that the teacher uses. Relative clause. It has lines and numbers. Component parts. You can use it to measure things. Function. It is used for measuring things. Passive phrase telling about function. It is made of wood or plastic. Passive phrase telling about material. What is it? Can you guess? It's a ruler. Now, you try it. Think of an object Help your classmates guess what that object is. Describe it generally. What category is it in? How is it different from other items in that category? Use adjectives. Use prepositional phrases. 
Use relative clauses. Tell about its parts. Tell what you can do with it. Use passive phrases. You don't have to use all of these, but use some of them. Take as much time as you'd like to practice these. You can use any or all of the language elements to describe objects. Practice describing other things in English. Use your own items. Or talk about some of these. Feel free to stop the video and talk about different items. Keep talking and keep practicing. Remember what you learned in this lesson. Pause the video and take as much time as you need. Hope that was helpful. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. If you have an idea for our next video, please share it with us at the link below. This video was brought to you by the following English learning websites.